Whether you like it or not, this is the modern day water reality. A combination of old dirty pipes, pollution, rust, corrosion, pesticides, fertilizers, cleansers, and microplastics, all conveniently mixed into the most essential molecule for your body. The molecule which literally makes up the majority of you. Now, this isn't an attempt to scare you into despair or engagement. It's simply to bring attention to an issue that we're all probably dealing with. By the way, this is what a clean filter looks like. Yeah. And talk about how we can mitigate the risk. Using some real life house water, my water, as an example. Packaging it up, sending it to one of the best testing labs there is, and hoping that I haven't been drinking straight up toxic junk and sharing the results so we can all learn a thing or two. So I uh, hope it's not horrible, but you can't fix what you can't measure, right? Let's go. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. This week, we have water, as you can tell, on the docket. And to be honest, this is long overdue because after years of blind yet confident hoping that my water filtration strategy was working, I figured it was probably a good idea to actually put it to the test, literally. So hopefully by the end, you'll scroll away from this powwow with some new insights and tips of how to improve your water situation. Because quite frankly, it matters. As soil and water pollution, the two fundamental variables that make up basically everything that we consume have never been this compromised, at least since we've been keeping track. As recent research has displayed that illnesses related to the pollution of soil, water, and air are responsible for an estimated 9 million premature deaths each year, which if you were wondering, equates to 16% of global annual deaths. Half of these deaths being of cardiovascular origins, with degradation of the soil threatening the health of at least 3.2 billion people, 40% of the global population, and water pollution being an issue for roughly 2 billion people, or 25% of the global population. This is due to the fact that pollutants such as heavy metals, pesticides, micro, and nanoplastics have been shown to cause cardiovascular damage by inducing oxidative stress, inflammation, and mitochondria dysfunction. And let me tell you something, those three pollutants are not decreasing in prevalence basically anywhere. Thus far, they've been up only in this modern world we live in. So, as we continue down this lifelong endeavor of owning our health to own our outcome, water simply cannot be ignored. With that, let's talk a little bit about this test and what you should know about water testing in general. Because I'm not going to lie, it's a little confusing. And I'll start by saying, finding the right test took a little more time than I initially thought. But I ended up going with a company called Simple Lab, which offered a wide range of different tests for different use cases. Which, as you can imagine, took a few more days to figure out what test actually worked best for my use case. Living in a suburban area, getting my water from a local utility. And you may be wondering, doesn't the water utility have to filter the water? And in that case, I don't really need to care. They got it under control, right? Right? Well, here's the thing. Although there is something called MCLs, which are maximum contaminant level standards, along with maximum contaminant level goals laid out by the Environmental Protection Agency and legally enforceable by the Safe Drinking Water Act, currently the EPA has only established MCLs for around 100 contaminants, making the rest kind of best effort. And you may be thinking once again, we filter a hundred of them. That should be pretty good, right? I mean, how many could there be? Well, as of 2024, there are 62,000 chemicals on the market identified as potential contaminants that pose a risk to human health. Yeah, 
And to be honest, this list is probably pretty optimistic. And as of today, many of these contaminants, which are under high risk investigation, still lack effective regulations. So this fact right here makes taking water filtration into your own hands a necessary part of owning your health. So after a thorough review, I personally chose the ultimate home water test made specifically for home water being provided from a local utility. And I picked this one, which I'll link below, along with the page to view all the other options due to the wide range of contaminants that it tested. It didn't do everything, but it looked at a solid 256 analytics, including heavy metals, bacteria, disinfection byproducts, herbicides, pesticides, inorganic, volatile, organic, and petroleum compounds. Now, one of the big things that it didn't test and something that I will probably follow up on is micro and nanoplastics. Because as we saw in this video here, they are one of the most abundant question marks that we inevitably interact with each and every day. And new research, which I have not, looked into yet, even suggests that they are being found in male cojones. Yeah, can't be good. Now, when you do this test, one of the biggest decisions that you have to make when you take your water draw is if you want to sample from the water faucet itself or from a filter you may be using. You could do both, but you'd need two tests and it cost double the money. So for me, since all of the water that I put into my body is filtered by my under the sink carbon block unit from Multipure, the one that starts out white and then looks like this after a few months, I decided to take the draw from my filter and I got to see if it was actually doing anything. So after collecting a number of different samples and shipping them over to the lab, 10 days later, my results were in presented in a nice dashboard online or a downloadable PDF. This report provided an overall score and highlighted all of the potential risks you may be facing. Evaluating the water across two key metrics. First, HGL or health guidance level, which is a proprietary metric from Simple Lab determined by selecting the lowest and therefore most protective human health benchmark available from public health agencies for a contaminant. And second, the aforementioned MCL maximum contaminant level, which once again is an enforceable standard set by the US EPA. And as a reminder, these MCLs are the highest permittable levels of a contaminant in drinking water under the Safe Water Drinking Act. So with that, how'd my uh, water look? Thankfully, pretty good with the only contaminant coming in slightly above HGL, yet still well under the federal MCL for drinking and bottled water being lead. And it actually gives you recommendations on how to treat it, some of which we'll talk about in just a minute. Most other readings for the 200 plus contaminants tested came in as below reporting limits, which basically means as good as it's gonna get for now. This included all of the heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides, and happily to me, the common water additives, fluoride and chlorine. And at this point, I would like to extend my gratitude for these results to my aforementioned carbon block filter, because in my opinion, and from the looks of things, it was a big part of these positive results. And interestingly, this was about five months into use, right before it got swapped. That being said, I cannot 100% know how much of an impact this actually made unless I do the test straight from the tap. So may have to do that. We'll see. If I do, we'll make another video. Now, with all of that credit I may have just given this filter, it is certainly not a silver bullet. So here are some key things to know when choosing and considering a filter yourself. First, the importance of placement because you gotta be strategic. For most people, a unit attached to a main household or apartment complex water line is not feasible. So within the house or apartment, aim to get filters on the sources that you interact with most. The two big ones being drinking and bathroom water. And when we talk about filters themselves, even though basic filters from the likes of Brita and Zero Water are better than nothing, they also do close to nothing. With that, there are two main ways to filter optimally, and they happen to be 
two combinations. First, the combo of distillation and carbon block. And second, the combination of carbon block and reverse osmosis. Choosing providers with NSF certified filters and changing these filters regularly. That being said, doing combinations of all these different systems can come with a fair amount of plumbing complexity especially when trying to hide them behind drywall or under a sink. So choosing a high quality carbon block or reverse osmosis system on their own is a good compromise and currently what I'm doing. As these will typically filter upwards of 95% of that long list of worrisome contaminants, which is pretty damn good. I personally use a carbon block under the sink unit from Multipure, specifically the Aqua Perform but there are a number of different options and even travel units that hook right up to the faucet itself. That being said, if you don't mind a countertop unit, there is a reverse osmosis plus carbon block system from Water and Wellness that is worth a look. The key with choosing any option is doing your research. Make sure the filters you are using are NSF certified in areas such as Standard 42, Aesthetic Effects, Standard 53, Health Effects, Standard 401, Emerging Contaminants, and Standard P231, Pathogenic Bacteria and Viruses. And yeah, it takes a little work, but come on, this is your cellular health and well-being we're talking about here. And thus your daily mood, feel, cognition, ambiance, and physical function. This is a literal case where what you put in is what you get out. Well, technically, what you become. Oh, and let's not forget that your skin is not only a protective barrier, but a selectively permeable one, especially when it comes to that good old Bobby Boucher H2O. So, showerhead filters are a good idea too. And listen, you're not gonna be perfect and filter to perfection. Not gonna happen. There's not even a filter out there or a strategy out there that can probably do it, especially in this growingly contaminated world that we live in. But by simply making an effort, making it a focus, and making it a priority, you will dramatically boost your chances of feeling how you're capable of feeling. Feeling how the human body was meant to feel. Effin' awesome, more days than not. If you have a water filtration strategy or favorite product, I'd love to hear about it. So please drop it in the comments below. And if at this point in the conversation, you feel you may need a little refresher on the importance of hydration and how to actually get hydrated, cause it's not that simple. I will shamelessly plug this review for you right here where we discuss just that. Because as you now know, you are not only what you eat, but probably more of what you drink. So stay thirsty, my friends, and uh, filter your water. Just look at it.